Amen. I need all the help I can get, so you help me tonight. Isaiah chapter 40, beginning the reading at verse 28. You have it, just shout out an amen. Amen. The prophet said, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of His understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Praise God. Aren't you glad for that? Powerful passage of Scripture. You can be seated if you'd like. Thank you so much for standing in reference to God's Word. One look again at those last two verses, verses 30 and 31. The prophet said, Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall what? Notice this. The young men shall utterly fall. Amen. Oh, that sounds discouraging, doesn't it? But I'm glad the prophet did not stop the chapter, didn't put a period on that point. He wrote on, he said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. In verse 30, the prophet said, The youths, the young men, what are they going to do? They're going to utterly fall. But in verse 31, he said, If we'll put our confidence in the Lord, if we'll wait, if we'll trust in Him, we're going to mount up with some wings as eagles. Amen. Oh, I won't preach about that for a little while tonight. Need the Lord's anointing and your help. I want to preach very simply on falling or flying. Falling or flying. This 40th chapter brings us to a division in the book of Isaiah. It's much like the division that is found between the Old and the New Testaments. For in verses or chapters, whether 1 through 39, we read about God, the sovereign, sitting upon the throne. But in chapters 40 through 66, we read about Jesus, the Savior, suffering upon the tree. The first section we read about the government of God. The second section we read about the grace of God. The first section we find ruin and rejection. The second section we find redemption and restoration. Up until now in all the previous chapters before this, the Jewish nation had been dejected and low in spirit. They were being held captive by the Babylonians. They were living in a foreign land in an unfamiliar place. They were no longer in Jerusalem under the reign of Ahaz or Hezekiah or Manasseh. They were exiled. The beloved city, their sacred temple, were desolate. If that wasn't bad enough, the Babylonian empire seemed stronger than ever. These people were in a state of spiritual decline. They felt that they were completely helpless. They felt as if God had neglected them. They got to the place where they were totally indifferent to the rescue where they didn't even expect for the Lord to move, where they didn't even care anymore about their deliverance. Hey, my, my, that sounds like the way we get so often, doesn't it? You take a look around, you see all these things that are coming against us between peer pressure, the temptations of the flesh, the doubts that surround our mind, the onslaught of hell. Hey, man, oh, it's easy to find a reason to want to give up. Isn't that right? When you're down and it seems like the enemy has got the best of you, he's got you right where he wants you, things are totally out of your control, you don't know what to do, it seems like the best thing is to just quit right on the spot. But oh, I want to tell somebody tonight, hold on, help is on the way. Amen, that's what Isaiah was trying to instill into these people. You see, usually a prophet gives a message of rebuke and correction, but it's here where Isaiah is trying to encourage and uplift the Jewish nation. From chapters 1 through 39, they were experiencing judgment and destruction. But oh, it's here in this 40th chapter, where a ray of light begins to shine through the darkness of their soul. Things are finally starting to turn around. From chapters 1 through 39, it was bleak, it was black, it was dark. But oh, here in this 40th chapter... 
God gives him a word of comfort, a word of peace, a word of assurance that everything is going to be all right. He's letting them know right now you are in captivity. You're a prisoner. You're bound. But soon I'm going to stretch forth my strong and my mighty hand and I'm going to bring you out. The chains are going to come off. You're going to be lifted up. Amen. You're going to spread your wings and you are going to fly again. Amen. Oh, that's what I come to do tonight. Like the prophet, I come to let somebody know things won't always be what they are now. Did you know that? It won't always be this way. Amen. God is going to get you out. There's about to be a turnaround for you, my friend. He's about to turn the page of your biography. He's going to open up a new chapter in your life. A chapter of salvation. A chapter of relief. A chapter of victory. I say by the grace of God, you can get those wings back. You can fly again. Can you say amen? You probably heard the story. John McNeil, that old Scottish preacher, he used to tell about an eagle that had been captured when it was quite young. The farmer who snared that bird put a chain on it. Then he turned it loose to roam in the barnyard among the chickens. wasn't long until that eagle started acting just like those chickens, scratching, pecking at the ground. He even started eating just like those lowly creatures. They said one day a naturalist visited that farmer. He asked him why the king of all birds should be confined in a barn, chained around all those chickens. That farmer explained that since he had put that eagle there, it had adjusted to its environment. It had lost its desire to fly. That naturalist said, still, it has the heart of an eagle. Surely it can learn to fly again. Amen. That farmer took the chain off the eagle. That naturalist lifted the bird to the sky. He said, you're an eagle. You belong in the air and not on the earth. Stretch forth your wings and fly. But that eagle had forgotten what it was. It refused to fly. That naturalist then took the eagle up to the roof of the farmhouse. He encouraged that bird, stretch forth your wings and fly. But that eagle lost that desire to fly. It wanted to be back down with those chickens. Finally, that naturalist, he took that eagle up to a high mountain. There he held the king of all birds high above him. He urged him once again, saying, you're an eagle. You belong in the air. You were meant to fly. Stretch forth your wings. That eagle looked up at the sky and back at the barnyard. They said right then that naturalist lifted that eagle straight towards the sun. He said that eagle began to tremble. Its instincts kicked in. Slowly, it stretched forth those powerful wings. And with a triumphant cry, it took off and soared away into the heavens. You know what happened that day? That eagle found out what it really was. That it was not made to be satisfied with the lowly. But it was made to soar to the lofty. That's the message I come to preach to you tonight. That is the message that Isaiah was trying to get across to the Jewish nation. They had been restrained and confined for so long. They had forgotten who they were. They had forgotten where they came from. They had forgotten what God intended for them to be. And I feel like that's what some of you are dealing with right now. You have lost sight of how great you really are. You're no longer living up to your potential. You are content with being grounded. Are you hearing me? You are no longer flying in the air. You are fettered by the snare. But I come to preach to you tonight. It's time you break free. It's time you get up again. It's time you get a move on. You know what you need to do? You need to get your eyes on the Son. On the Son of God. Amen. Oh, come on now. You weren't meant to hang around this world. Did you know that? You weren't meant to hang around people who don't care about their purpose. Amen. Young folks, I want you to understand. You were not meant to to hang around those who are wasting their lives away who are ruining their reputation they're only going to drag you down I said you weren't meant to to be like everybody else you weren't meant to be the norm amen oh no you were meant to mount up you were meant to ascend to the highest of heights praise God you were meant to fly you were meant to fly high help me believe that tonight Woo! hallelujah 
I want you to notice what the prophet says here in verse 30. Even, even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Consider with me the weariness that can be fatal. The weariness that can be fatal. Isaiah is giving us a word of woe. A word of warning. When he tells us even the youths shall faint and be weary. Even them. Even the young men shall utterly fall. Now, it would have been bad enough if he had said even the middle-aged shall faint and be weary. Even the elders, the older ones, shall utterly fall. But Isaiah's words are even more distroubling than that when he declares it's the youths and the young men for they are supposed to be in the prime of life, aren't they? At the peak of their strength, the strongest of the strong and the bravest of the brave. But Isaiah said even them, even the most powerful men, they're going to grow weak and weary. They're going to fall by the wayside. Amen. Oh, we've been seeing a lot of that lately, haven't we? Let's be honest. Amen. People who we thought were the most spiritual. People who we thought were being used by God on a higher level. The last ones we would ever think about messing up. The last ones we would ever think about backsliding. They are the ones who have folded their wings. They have put them down. And they have stopped flying. I wonder, does that describe any of you? Is that what you've done? Oh, come on now. Maybe you're here tonight and something has knocked the wind out of you. Something has robbed you of your flight. Something has deprived you of your ability to soar. Hey, man, I want to tell you, friend, you just need to give it one more try. You just need to give it one more shot. Get back in there again. You may feel weak. You may feel weary. You may feel worn. But God can pick you back up. He can send you a revival. For the prophet said, He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. I want to tell you, you may be down, but you're not done. You can recover again. Aren't you glad for that? Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. You must understand tonight, your weariness can be fatal. Did you know that? Oh, it can be fatal. Uh, you see, the devil, he'd like to get you as low as possible. He wants to do whatever he can to pull you out of the atmosphere of heaven. Because he knows if he can do that, he's got you right where he wants you. You're on his playing field now. You're a sitting duck. Amen. Kind of reminds me of the story I read about that man who taken his family on a trip to the Niagara Falls. It was the beginning of springtime. Ice was rushing down the river. As that man sat and viewed those large chunks, those blocks of ice flowing towards the falls, he could see carcasses of dead fish frozen in that ice. He saw a bird swoop down, land on a particular chunk of ice. He said it stayed there for a long time, eating its defenseless prey, you know. Engrossed with the carcass of the dead fish as the current swiftly pushed that ice down the river. When that ice drew close to the falls, that bird, now full from its meal, raised its powerful wings to attempt to fly away. But it could not. Its talons, its claws were now so embedded, they were buried practically frozen in that ice. As that ice drifted closer to the falls, that bird tried again with everything it could to escape, but it could not. Finally, at the brink of those falls, that bird raised its powerful wings once more. It flapped and flapped, even lifted the ice out of the water. But all that creature had stayed down for way too long. The weight of the ice was too great, and that bird went over the falls and plunged into the abyss. Hey man, can I tell somebody tonight, you cannot afford to let down on your convictions. Did you know that? You cannot afford to let down on your holiness standards. You cannot afford to let down on the things of God. Because I'll tell you, if you don't fly, you are going to fall. Amen. Oh, come on now. I know sometimes when you're weary, when you're discouraged, it feels good to rest those wings. I've been there. feels good to become complacent, to stop trying, to not have to fight back. But listen to this preacher. If you're not careful, you're going to stay 
stayed up for so long. You're going to get stuck in that place. It's going to put you on the wrong path. It's going to put you in the wrong road. Amen. It's going to be what leads to your ruin. I say somebody better get up while you still can. You better get out of that rut while it's still time. I said you got to rise above it before it takes you under. Hallelujah. I've been told that in the city of Philadelphia, there's a statue of William Penn, that great Englishman who founded the state of Pennsylvania, you know, the city of Philadelphia. They said that statue of William Penn is 25 feet tall itself. It's situated on the very peak of the dome of Philadelphia City Hall. They said, of course, as we know, during the fall season, when birds begin to migrate, fly south to warmer climates, they do so at twilight, at nighttime, when it gets dark, right? Because of that, dead birds were frequently found among the masonry around the pavement every morning around Philadelphia City Hall. They said one morning over a hundred dead birds were found. At first, people were baffled by this. They wondered, how can it be? But then researchers quickly discovered the reason. They found out that while those birds were migrating, they were flying in the dark, couldn't see very well. They were flying way too low. They flew into that statue. They fell down to their death and to their demise. And I'll tell you, I'm afraid that is the tragedy that has taken place in the lives of many Christians today. They are flying like those birds way too low. Flying too close to this world. Flying too close to sin. Flying too close to compromise. Amen. Oh, are you hearing me tonight? Amen. Come on now. I'll tell you, we wouldn't have such a trouble. Amen. With people backsliding, getting cold in their experience. If we just go up instead of going down. We wouldn't have such a difficulty defeating our temptations. If we just get closer to God than the world. Can I tell you, friend? If you'll stop depending on your strength and start depending on His strength, you won't be fatigued. You won't be overtaken. Amen. Oh, no. You're going to keep ascending a little bit higher until one of these days you're going to rise above everything that's been trying to keep you down. You're going to rise above everything that's trying to keep you under. You're going to spread those wings and you're going to fly like you've never flown before I say you can get over it you can get above it if you'll get your wings back hallelujah Isaiah he gives us the recipe if you will for revival doesn't he he said but they that what they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength consider not only the weariness that can be fatal but also consider the waiting that must be fulfilled. Isaiah tells us exactly where our strength comes from, doesn't he? In fact, he gives us in our text three titles for God. Notice he calls him the creator, meaning he is infinite. Before there was a beginning, before there was time, before there was anything, there was God. Amen. He was God before we ever got here. He didn't need our opinion. He didn't need our help. He didn't need us to put our two cents in. He didn't need us to elect Him to the position. He did not need us to cast a vote. He was already God right from the start, which tells us He is a past strength. But Isaiah also calls Him Lord, meaning there is none like Him. He stands in the solitude of Himself. He sits on His throne alone. Just by His Word, a world was formed. He snapped His omnipotent fingers and a universe appeared. When everything else is out of control, He is always in control. It doesn't matter the doctor's diagnosis. doesn't matter how your bank statement reads. does not matter what the psychiatrist tells you or labels that problem. He is Lord. He is Lord of all. He is the Lord of lords, which tells us He is a present strength, a strength for right now. But Isaiah also calls Him the everlasting God. He has always been here, and He will always be here. You see, He is not just the first, but He is the last. He is not just Alpha, 
He is Omega. He is not just the God of the beginning. He is the God of the ending and the God all in between. He had no predecessor. He will have no successor. Nobody voted him in. Nobody will be able to vote him out. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. He is God alone. Amen. Oh, yes. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I say if he holds the hands of time, if he holds the keys to our future, there is no reason to worry about anything. There's no reason to fret. There's no reason to hang your head low because although you may not know what tomorrow holds, at least we know who holds tomorrow. You know what that tells me tonight? That tells me he's a past strength, a strength for yesterday. He's a present strength, a strength for today. But he is a perpetual strength. He is a strength for tomorrow and the rest of our days. I said God is strong and he wants you to be strong too. You just got to do what the prophet said and wait on the Lord. Just trust him. Just give in to him. He'll hold you together when you feel like you're falling apart. He'll lift you up. I said God will see you through it. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. You know how we're going to be able to fly again, really, as a church? You know how we're going to be able to rise above all this? we got to put some wind underneath our wings. This is how what the early church did. After Jesus died, it seemed like the whole world was against them. Their strength was gone. Their desire had been abandoned. Their expectation was lost. They were weary, weren't they? Amen. Oh, when Jesus resurrected, He gave those disciples the same instructions Isaiah gave us in our text. He told them to wait. To wait for the promise of the Father. As soon as He ascended into heaven, they all got together in an upper room, got in one mind and with one accord. Immediately, they were getting a little bit higher, weren't they? Amen. They were praying... When the Bible tells us that suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a what? As of a rushing mighty wind. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. They regained that power. Do you get it? He put some wind underneath their wings. And all through the rest of the book of Acts, amen, we see the early church flying higher and higher. They went from the depths of despair to the heights of hope. They were soaring by the assistance of the Spirit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That's what somebody ought to do here tonight. It's time you realize I cannot handle it on my own. I've got to let the Holy Ghost carry me through this one. I've got to let the Spirit of God bear me up. I don't care what comes my way. Come hell or high water, I'm going to shout above it. I'm going to fight above it. I'm going to pray above it. I'm going to sing above it. Hey man, I say you can soar like you never have before. Somebody ought to let the Holy Ghost come to where you're at. Let Him breathe in the pew you're sitting in. Let Him put some wind underneath those wings. And you can get over it. Can we praise Him tonight? Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Breathe on your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. A preacher, he, he once told the story of how he was privileged to go with a group of watchers to observe a mother eagle at her nest. He said they watched her for several days, carefully, quietly, wishing to not disturb her, you know. From their point of observation, they finally saw what they had been anticipating. They thought it to only be a legend. But they witnessed that mother eagle stir her nest, force her eaglet to fly. A preacher said one morning they witnessed that mother eagle pick up one of her eaglet and put it on her back. He said off from the nest she went and soared away into the sky. He said when that mother eagle was almost out of her sight, out of our sight, he said we watched her turn completely over, upside down, and let that eaglet go. He said I watched with all of its muster and might 
flap its wings and try to fly, but it could not. He said it kept falling faster and faster. He said, I thought to myself, surely it's going to crash on the rocks below. He said, I even cried out, oh no, it's going to be killed. It's going to be broken to pieces. He said, but suddenly, coming in from the side, was that mother eagle. He said, right before that eagle would have hit the ground, she swooped down underneath it and caught it and carried it back up to the heights. That preacher said, great was the day in my life when I realized that God can fly faster than I can fall. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That's why I come to preach to somebody tonight. There may be times where you feel like your strength is gone. You may feel like you're getting weaker and weaker by the minute. You may feel like you're falling fast and you're falling hard. But God sent this young preacher by tonight to tell you he can swoop down underneath you. He can catch you and put you back up again. I said God can fly faster than you can fall. Jude said now unto him, that is able what's he able to do he is able to keep you from falling amen it's not so much that you're flying but he's carrying you he told the Israelites I brought you on eagle's wings brought you to myself in other words I was the one who picked you up I was the one who got you out somebody ought to trust in him tonight somebody ought to wait on the Lord to give you the strength you need. Hallelujah. Oh, I believe he's got enough strength for all of us. Don't you? Amen. Consider quickly, not only the weariness that can be fatal, not only the waiting that must be fulfilled, but lastly, consider the wings that will give flight. Here in verse 30, Isaiah relates a Christian to an eagle, doesn't he? Eagles are said to be solitary birds. They are great in flight, great in sight, and great in might. From a mile up in the air, they can spot a rabbit on the ground, swoop down at speeds of over 70 miles an hour, come within an inch of the ground, pick that rabbit up, and soar back up to the sky. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? They say even in the darkness, they have a keen eyesight. Their wingspan stretches from six to eight feet long. That's a very amazing bird. But those eagles have an enemy called the condor. Those condors like to travel together in groups. They'll gather around the eagle as it flies in the sky. They'll swoop down and bite on its flesh, pull on its feathers. But they say those eagles have what is known as a built-in sunshade over their eyes. It's a mucous membrane that folds down over their eyelids. Those eagles will turn their eyes to the sun and fly straight into it. The sun will shine, beat down on their face, but it never bothers or irritates that eagle because they were made to be in the presence of the sun. Oh, hallelujah. But those condors, they can't take the brightness of the sun like the eagle can. They say that eagle will just keep flying higher and closer to the sunlight until that condor is forced to turn away. And the eagle is completely set free from its enemy. And I'll tell you tonight when I read that, I thought, my God, that's the way it ought to be in each one of our lives. When Satan has you surrounded on every side, when all the forces of hell join together and try to bring you down, when adversity tries to make you weak and faint in heart, you know what you need to do? You just need to get your eyes on the sun. Not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. Just keep getting closer to the Son of God. Let Him his glory shine down on your soul. I believe he'll take you to such heights where no devil can touch you. No enemy can stop you. No hindrance can get to you. He'll blind every opposition. He'll stop every foe. I said God can help you rise above it. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get you to understand your salvation will be in your wings. That's why you can't give anything to the devil. Because if you give him one thing, he'll take away everything. You hear me? Kind of reminds me of that fable, and I'm closing. Frederick Speakman told, you may have heard it before. It's a fable about a nightingale who traded its feathers for worms. Once a day, a peddler would stop by 
make a proposition in that nightingale. One feather for one worm, he would say. It was a painless transaction, really, you know. Just a single feather. But you can imagine, eventually, that nightingale traded away all of its feathers. No longer had wings to fly. They said that night went out, searched all through the long night until he himself had a bucket of worms. The next day, that nightingale waited for the peddler to stop by. When he did, he said, this time, I have a bucket of worms. He said, I want my wings back. That peddler looked and mocked. He said, oh, foolish one. He said, I'm not in the business of trading wings for worms. I'm only in the business of taking wings. Can I tell you tonight, I'm afraid. That's where a lot of folks are at right now. Just like that nightingale, they are trading their wings for things. They're letting that glory fade from their lives. That's why we don't see them flying anymore. But can I tell you, friend, amen, what you are giving to the devil, what you are allowing him to take from you, is going to be the very thing you need to make it out of here. It's going to be the very thing you need to obtain the victory. I said it's going to be the very thing you need to rise above it. I say whatever you do, don't let the devil steal your wings. Don't let him take your strength. Don't let him fool you. I want to tell you, friend, you can rise above that fainting spirit. You can survive in these last days, but you got to keep your wings. I don't want to give them up to the devil, do you? Oh, one Brother Roberts, if that's okay, sing that song again. Amen. He was singing so good in the preliminaries. I'll tell you, as he's coming, I'm reminded... Amen. Of Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. You remember? Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. He said, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Did you get that? Paul was riding to Thessalonica. Also to each one of us. He was letting us know in the last days there's going to be a falling away. Isn't that right? People backsliding, getting out of church. Amen. Leaving the house of God. We've been seeing that, right? Already been taking place. But oh, I'm glad we're not the only ones. Amen. That Paul was writing about, aren't you? I'm glad we're not ones that have to be classified in that category. Because before Paul ever told us about the falling away in 2 Thessalonians, he told us about that catching away. In First Thessalonians, already been quoted tonight, First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16, he said, for the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be what? Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in in the air. You know what that tells me, church? That tells me some may be falling, but others will be flying. Some may be going down, but others are going up. Some may be meeting their demise, but others will be meeting in the skies. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The songwriter said, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. I said, you don't have to fall. You can fly again when we stand and praise Him tonight. How many like to get their wings back? Oh, hallelujah. Can we come and gather while He's singing? You need some wings in this hour. Everything you need is in those wings, my friend. There's salvation, healing, deliverance in those wings. Let's gather tonight.